Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little bat. Oh, how about that? <laughs> it's a very quick and easy tutorial guys. You're going to love it. Quick, easy, basic, fantastic. Now, what you will need for your tutorial is very minimal amounts of black and white yarn. And when I say minimal, I mean very minimal. You will need your, oh, by the way, the, the yarn we are using is a four ply yarn, Australian yarn, um, Australian cotton, I should say. If you are overseas, that's usually a number two cotton. You will need your 3.5 millimeter hook. You will need three stitch markers, sewing needle, scissors, and of course, you will need your necklace because we are also going to attach your bat today. Again, like I said, it is a very basic uh, pattern. The only difficult part is attaching it to your piece. And you guys, you know, we've done plenty of sewing before, so I'm pretty sure you can manage it. It shouldn't take too long for you to make. I'm not going to talk anymore so that you can get on with making your gorgeous little bat. Alrighty, guys. For this guy here you will need four ply cotton that's the thinner cotton or a number two in your country if you are overseas you will need a 3.5 millimeter hook you will need your oh dear that's not there we go <laughs> you will need three stitch markers a sewing needle and a pair of scissors however to do the first part of the tutorial yours truly is going to use some super thick yarn and a larger hook. So what we're going to do today, we're going to use um, just a purple that I had in stock. I don't even know the brand, to be honest with you. That's just something was lying around. So we're going to use that. And we're going to start off with a slip knot, which is grab your tail end, wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it there. All right. Pass your back loop halfway over, hold it there. Pass the other loop all the way over, grab your hook and give it a tug all right now um, the pattern calls for 13 single crochets so we're going to chain up 14 so chaining one and that's yarn over your hook pull a loop through once twice three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. In that stitch right there, you're going to do a single crochet, okay? Single crochet is pop your hook through that little loop, one loop, grab a loop, pulling it through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Now you're just going to grab your stitch marker because these um, ends are really sometimes difficult to get into so <laughs> there you go now we're going to pop a single crochet in that next loop right there okay like that that's your second single crochet then you've got another loop right there you're going to pop another one third single crochet next one fourth five six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and right there is where we do our thirteenth. Now if you don't have thirteen single crochets across, just have a quick look see where you may have gone wrong but you definitely need 13 for this pattern to work all right so easy chaining one turning your work like that so just turn it like you're turning the page in a book single crochet in that first space and guess what you're going to pop a stitch marker in there and you're putting it through those two little loops you see right there. Now you should be working with your four ply cotton so it's nice and thin so it's a little bit difficult to see. Okay, so best 
to use those stitch markers I think and do your single crochets all the way across so that's one and one our second one three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now this is why I asked you to put your stitch marker in because I found this stitch here is really really tight for me when I'm using the thinner yarn so you pop your hook in there you can take your stitch marker out if it's easy for you I'm going to take it out now anyway and this is your 13th stitch again if you don't have 13 you must find out where you've gone wrong all right so 13 stitches all the way across now best part guys all you need to do is do two more rows exactly like this remembering to pop in your stitch markers and then meet me back here in a moment alrighty guys I'm at the end of that fourth row now what we're going to do this is where the pattern comes in so now you're going to chain four one two three four turn your work a close up here for you now in that stitch where you've chained up four in that very first stitch you're still in there you're going to do a double crochet that's yarn over your hook pop your hook in that stitch where you usually put your single crochet pull a loop through and you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two now in that very next stitch it's a single crochet just one and one in your next now in this stitch here you're going to put a single crochet first chain one and a double crochet which is your yarn over your hook pop it in the same stitch pull up your loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two chain one and then single crochet all in the same stitch all right now you've got a single crochet in your next stitch in your next stitch we're going to change a pattern once again single crochet in there chain one and now we're going to put a half double crochet half double crochet is you pop your yarn over your hook pop it in the space pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook chain one single crochet in the same stitch okay now you're going to single crochet in the next stitch being careful not to miss it it's right there okay single crochet in there now in your next stitch you're going to start your single crochet hold it there because this is where I would like for you to pop a stitch marker in the opposite side of that stitch so just run your stitch marker down go right to the opposite end there and pop a stitch marker in there and I'll tell you about that later when we get to that area okay so we are going to do the same as we did here we're going we've done our single crochet now we're going to chain one and we're going to do a half double that's yarn over your hook half double crochet goes in the, st the stitch pull up your loop you've got three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook chain one single crochet back in the same stitch okay now single crochet in your next stitch and in your next stitch you're doing the larger of the clusters the one we did over here again okay so you're just going to pop a single crochet in that stitch chain one and a double crochet double is yarn over your hook pop it in the space pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two chain one and again single crochet all in the same stitch then you single crochet two in a row one and one in the second one 
Now in your last one, you're going to do the same as you did over here, but it's a little bit different. You're going to pop a double crochet, which is your yarn over your hook, in that stitch marker. Pull a loop through. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Just take that stitch marker out for a minute. Chain one. You're going to do it again. In the space like so all right so that is so far that is what you should have that's what it should look like you should have two large ones there two large ones there and two smaller ones in the middle like that all right now best part guys we're almost done i know sounds weird yeah nice and quick this one now chain one we're going to work along here now but what we're going to do is slip stitch across. Slip stitch is popping your hook in the space, pull a loop through, and pull it through through the loop on your hook. Okay? Now skipping over all of that, popping it in that next gap that you see on your work, next space you see, with another slip stitch. Going into another space with another slip stitch. Wherever you see a little chain space or a little hole, you're doing slip stitches all the way down. It might be five and it might be six. It doesn't matter. This is where you can fudge your work. If you've made a mistake, this is a part you can fudge it in. I'm just going to pop that thread over because I'm going to weave that in as I go along. Okay. Now we're in that end stitch right there. Chain one. You're going to slip stitch back in there because you've just made a corner. And there you go. Okay. Now you're going to slip stitch across here until you get to that stitch marker all right so you hop in the stitch pull a loop through slip stitch in the stitch pull a loop through slip stitch all the way across until you get to the stitch marker you're picking up both loops there by the way not just the one in there pull a loop through and you are now officially there all right this is where the pattern's going to change just that little bit more, okay? In that stitch marker, you're going to pop a single crochet. And I would take that stitch marker out now. Don't need those anymore. Chain one. Now we're going to do what we call a treble. And a treble is your yarn over your hook twice, okay? Before you pop it in the space, it's yarn over your hook twice you've got two loops on your hook pop it back in the stitch that you're in pull up a loop you now have one two three four yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two chain one and a single crochet back in the same space a little bit overcrowded but that's okay now the next stitch you may not be able to see it because it's pulling here, but it's right there, okay? And if you're working with black and it's really thin, it's going to be hard to see. So pop your hook in there, slip stitch, one. Now in your next stitch, you're going to do this again. So you're going to go in there with a single crochet in the two loops there. See those two loops? In there with a single crochet chain one and we're going to do our treble again yarn over your hook twice pop it in the stitch pull up a loop you've got one two three four loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two chain one single crochet back into that space that's it guys now you're going to slip stitch now that is a stitch right next to it you're going to slip stitch all the way across those really tight stitches there but they're there you know keep slip stitching all the way across now to keep it in sync you get to that corner chain one slip stitch again in the corner to keep it in sync with the last corner and now you're going to slip stitch right up to the very top it's just to keep your pattern in sync. Now your pattern will be all curvy, that's normal, okay? Because it's, it's rather tight stitch what we're doing here. 
pop it in that last space there then go right into the stitch up the top like that chain one now before you cut all right now before we continue I've just changed over to the original piece because we are going to use some color to attach on his little eye now his face that you see that where his eye goes is actually that bit there so that's him upside down that's his wings and that's his face with his little ears and that's his eyes right so all you're going to do is just grab a small amount of white it doesn't have to be a lot very minimal all right because you need to pop the eye on before we attach him to our um, necklace otherwise it's just going to be so difficult later <laughs> see how small that thread is we really don't need much I think with this one here I only went through twice maybe three times and it's a very small piece now that's the right side okay so facing your right side is you can tell just pick one side really you can kind of tell the right side anyways um, where we last uh, stitched off that was our right side facing us if that helps and then all you do is pop your needle anywhere in your um, little space there I might bring it a little bit lower and try and pop it with inside a stitch if that helps not in a gap but actually in the stitch of your treble if that helps you because I think they were the treble stitches we did earlier that was the last row that we did there all right so pop that there and then just find another stitch a little bit lower let's make sure it's straight before we pull it all through yep perfect and then all you're doing is going back the other way same way just go back in the old the first space you did and back into that place right there again you can see that I've kind of gone over it and popped it in a little bit of a different space so let's just find another space way up the top there it's the same space but it's kind of like a little mill or something smaller if you know what I mean so just keep going through it and it makes it a little bit bigger I think that's plenty twice three times is plenty turn around and now you actually have to tie it in a knot first once and twice and while I've still got the needle on that one I'm going to weave that thread in and you can see how I do it I just go in and out of the uh, stitch itself one way find another part of a stitch this way I'm only going to do it twice because it's already knotted and that's going to be sewn over anyways so I'm not going to fuss with that one you need to sew in the other white thread before you continue so go ahead and just weave that in and out of that stitch there just like we did and join me back here in a moment and we'll get together and attach our bat to our necklace okay you need to leave a long 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 tail because we're going to use that tail to sew to our necklace all right so leave that over there for now grab your piece yes and remember how I said to leave a long tail just do it like that and give it a cut <laughs> magic <laughs> here it is <laughs> I thought I'd just do it in the large purple for you to see but this part has to be done in the right piece because you need to attach this piece to your um, necklace you're not attaching that big large bit to your necklace you're attaching this one here all right so you've pulled your loop through so you would have this nice long tail and what you're going to do is find a spot to attach your bat now it's up to you where you want your bat to go all right let me bring that out a little bit you have a choice your bat can be like that where he's watching both of the cat and the eye or he could be hanging upside down sleeping 
<laughs> it's entirely up to you. This is all going to sit down nicely because we're going to sew around this. Oh, yeah, you're going to do some sewing. Sorry, guys. However, I think I like, because it seems to work well with that, I like it to go, I like him to go that way. And what I might do is just face him a little bit this way because that collar is going to go like that. Our necklace, it's not a collar, our necklace is going to sit like that on our neck. All right, so the cat will be facing us, the eyes facing us, and the bat is facing us. All right, so that's that. Now, what you need to do, grab your stitch markers, as many as you like, and find spots where you want to pin him down. If you have safety pins, this works better. Um, even if you have normal pins, that works just as good as well. So find a spot where you want to pin your little bat down it doesn't matter but he needs to go through all thicknesses and I'll turn it over in a minute and show you because otherwise it's not going to work if you don't pop it through all thicknesses all right so there he is pinned through there so you're going to have to sew along there okay and his top part of him is pinned through there and all of this eye, right, all his eyes here, so all of that needs to be sewn along there. So you may need some more stitch markers to help you out. Yours truly is not going to bother because I'm, you know, pretty good at sewing, so there you go. Um, and in fact, I find that's a little too low. I'm going to raise him a little bit more so that he can actually sit on there, right there, okay? Anyway, set your guy up as best you can grab your darning needle I think I've got too much thread here <laughs> I might have to cut some but I just, I'm too scared to cut it in case I need it all oh well I've knotted it so it's gonna have to be cut anyway <laughs> look what I've done I can't be bothered getting that undone this thin yarn's gonna take me ages so I'm gonna give it a cut anyway <laughs> but give yourself a nice long tail if you've cut it already and it's too short you might need to add I just thought it would be better to use the tail of the actual piece that we're working with to save us having an extra yarn to weave in. But anyway, grab this. Now this is where some sewing skills come in. All right. This is already attached to our bat. So all we need to do is pop a little thread, uh, uh, pop a needle between some thread there on your work, wherever you want to pop it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pop it there in that thread like that and just pop it through oh, I can see this getting all knotty <laughs> I really can <laughs> it's just far too long all right and now all you're going to do is pop it through the bat on the other side all right bring that through this is really close sorry guys I'll bring it out a little bit <laughs> I'm not that close all right now we are just going to go around and if you find that this doesn't sit right you can go over it and and just jiggle him around when you want there you go easy the best part is guys you've done his eyes you've done the bat now all we're doing is attaching once we're done this is it this is it for our our um, necklace it really is I'm gonna take this under no I'll, I'll leave that one there I might have to just work around it I don't want to I might just take that stitch marker undone all right so just being weary because now my stitch markers undone that I might move it so I'm going to be very careful it's already attached to that top part there so that's not gonna that's not gonna come undone so you just grab some thread underneath of the red some of your red under there pulling it through and then grabbing some of your bat underneath and pulling it through this way you are actually going to be hiding your thread some of the bat and then some of the red and I've knotted it <laughs> there we go it worked all right so this is where we've come to with the eye, okay, and the ears, if that's what you want to call them. <laughs> All right, so now we've got to go back into the red. 
anywhere you like. Now I'm going to be very weary because I want his eyes and his ears to, to stay. But I also want them to be across this way. I need them to cover that little spot right there. So what I'm going to do is pass my thread. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Pass it through some of the black and the white. Very, very thick now there. So hopefully that works for you. And it doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit because um, you want it to be nice and thick. You want it to be all stable and into place. All right, so there we go. We've got the back of the eye. And I'm pulling it shut. How's that? See, it's sitting on there. Now we want to grab some of the red. And it doesn't matter what it looks like at the back of the red because no one's going to see that. And there you go. His eye has been attached and his ear there. See, this one's loose and this one's attached. See, with the cat, it was different because the cat was already attached complete. So we left his ears sit up. But with the bat, there's nowhere to attach him. So we kind of have to attach his eyes and his ears there. All right. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do exactly that with the other side. And it's okay to grab part of the stitching of the black because you won't be able to tell because it's black thread, okay? Maybe you're not tangling it up like I am. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, now we are going to pop our thread into the red, which will be right there. Yes, and then we're going through the back of those little bump, bumps, the bat bumps, whatever you want to call them, the <laughs> bat bumps. <laughs> All right, so he's really attaching nicely. You can take that stitch marker undone now, okay, and you can stretch him out. All right, so now... I'm pretty sure you know what you're doing, but we'll stick around anyway. You pop your thread anywhere you want on your red side, and it can be wide too. Oh, you know what I've done. Just gone through. Look at that. <gasps> Terry me. Uh, Got to be careful. <laughs> Terry me. Just pulled a thread. Anyway, it'll be tucked in. No one will be able to see it. There you go. Now, you're going to pop it through the other side there. See, I'm doing that large now. This part here can be large because you've got plenty of room to, to stitch him on. So it doesn't matter how big you're doing it. Just make sure you can do it small enough to stay inside and not hanging off there. Now, he's, he can hang off a bit. That's fine. But when you're sewing it in, your sewing has to be internal. All right. Okay, so you just turn him around and guess what? Now you've got your bumps. So being weary, those bumps need to be attached. So being weary where to attach them. If it helps now to lay that flat so that you can do the rest. And you can stretch it and have the tail tails there. Or you can just do what I do. Leave it flat and then just sewing in and out there. You probably won't even need that stitch marker anymore. But we'll get a few done first. And then we'll see how we go with the stitch mark. But see how black is so hard to see? And we're going to go into that red underneath there. Well, it might just go in one because we want to go in that bump there in a minute. The black bump. His tail bump, if that's what you want to call it. We're going through the black. There we go. And then we're going through the red. So it's a little bit fiddly, a little bit fiddly. Nothing you can't handle, though, because this is so much easier than the cat was. <laughs> Trust me, it was so much easier than the cat. Oh, what have I done here? I'm going through the bumps and through the thinner, the smaller section as well. 
because I want to keep it all down. I want it to all stay down. It's looking gorgeous. And now back into your black. And we're nearly done, guys. Get excited. We're nearly done. And the best part is we're nearly done about the whole necklace is nearly done. So that's really, really fantastic. Okay. Ta-da. Whoops. I didn't pull it too tight. <laughs> I just saw it cringe then. <laughs> okay. Again, popping it through the black. And like I said, if you see the black here, you can't anyway. If the black comes through, it doesn't matter. Yeah? You won't be able to see it at all especially with this thin yarn if you're using a thicker yarn it's possible it may be visible um, i'm tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to take out that stitch marker because i can't see what i'm doing now and i think i did that stitch a little too low oh no that's all right take out your stitch marker lay your guy down and just make sure you are stitching him in all the right places. Easy. Oh, well, it's not easy. It's just, you know, it's done. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> all right. Now, before we cut our thread, we're going to check that everything really has stitched on and there's no gaps because we can't have gaps. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. Like there, that would have been a gap if I didn't stitch it to the black. So now I'm going to stitch it to the black. <laughs> yep, this really was a long thread. I really didn't need such a long thread. Okay, so here I am. That's what I've got left. So all I'm doing is finding a little bit of red in here. Yep. Because he's got to go down. That little, that little black thing's got to go down. So, oh gosh, tangled everything up there. And now we're going to grab the black right there, that little lump. Okay. Back into the red again, anywhere you like. And let's have a look. See, that black should go right down now. There you go. I think I've gone too far. Oh dear, I have to. <laughs> I hope it works now, or I can just pull that black through. <sighs> course it had to not doing well there we go oh that's not bad it worked so now what you're going to do with this thread here you're going to pop it in that red pass it through to the back there pop it through oh I should have got you to check it first we can check it now while we're here making sure everything is attached there and making sure your bat is perfect before you weave your end in and cut it looks gorgeous to me oh sorry try getting that out a little bit that's better <laughs> it looks perfect to me so what we're going to do now what we're going to do now is we are going to weave in our end oh, making sure <laughs> your thread is in the right side all right so here we are got the needle in your hand your thread in your hand and now all you're doing is weaving along this way if you want to pick up a couple of Oh, I'm so far away, sorry. You weave it right through to black. And if you want to pick up some red as well, let's try that. That's better. You can just remember um, to not let it show on this side. Okay, that's fine. All you're doing is weaving this end in backward and forward two or three times. Any way, in any place you like, making sure it's not showing on the red on that side and it's not Whoops, my finger caught. This thread was far too long. <laughs> and then you're going back one more way. Whoops. So you're going back, you're going through three times. And then guess what you're doing? You're going to cut it. And you've got a really important job to do now. Are you ready? You ready for the important job? You're going to love this job. Admire it. <laughs> so there you go. Now, guys, this has taken over a week, nearly a week and a half. Whoops. Let's bring that up a little. Nearly a week and a half to complete. But look at that. We now officially have a necklace, bring it out a little bit, for Halloween with our evil black cat, cheeky bat, and the spooky eye. <laughs> so there you go. Ah, oh, very excited. It's done. I keep moving it to fit it in, but how's that? That's better. 
<laughs> and you're now done, officially done. This is ready to wear on our Halloween party. If you're joining us new here, firstly, welcome. <laughs> and secondly, we are creating a Halloween series for a Halloween party that we're going to have around Halloween. Very exciting. Lots of interesting things are going to happen during that party. Get excited, guys. In the meantime, enjoy what you have just created. Now, if you wanted to create the next item we're going to make, you're going to love this one. It's going to be like a, a very kind of large lacy top, kind of like a spiderweb top that we're going to wear during our story time. And don't forget, we've also done other items for Halloween as well. The link for the playlist, the Halloween playlist that is, <laughs> the very first link you see will be the Halloween playlist. Click on that link and go ahead and create all your items. You've got plenty of time to do them before we start our top on Monday or Tuesday of next week. Get excited guys because that's the very final item we're going to make. We may make a small little um, trick or treat bag but that's something that'll be quite quick and easy. But for now get excited because that top is coming Monday. Congratulations you've finished your necklace finally. And don't forget, guys, to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you do for me. And all I want to say right now, guys, is ah, ciao for now. <laughs>